Hello, uh, I'm John Bindernagel, a professional wildlife biologist, and I've been preparing a series of research videos to uh, <clears throat> kind of uh, what portray some of the results of my Sasquatch research over the past 50 years, and especially over the past, gee, 10 to 20 years. And I'd like to Today I'd like to talk about Sasquatch tracks in snow, and <clears throat> it, it's interesting that, you know, tracks in snow have such a bad reputation of being mere blobs, so let's, let's start with that. Let's start, actually, if, if you don't mind, with a historical account. Uh, <clears throat> we're talking 1790. A Hudson's Bay trader based in northern Saskatchewan. And here's what the Hudson's Bay trader wrote. This is Edward Humphreyville in his book. They, and he's referring to what he refers to as the Indians of the North Saskatchewan River. They frequently persuade themselves that they see his track in the moss or snow. Well, I'm not going to address tracks in moss right now because, as we know, in moss you get a mere impression. You do get the dimensions of the, the foot that made the track, but, but you don't get details like uh, toe definition. So, And probably what he, that trader, may have been referring to is these kind of blobs, which nevertheless do form a trackway, and we will return to this image of a, of a Sasquatch trackway as possibly more significant than it first appears. Now, tracks in snow. Tracks in snow, when the snow is moist and shallow, can provide pretty accurate uh, depictions of tracks, such as this raccoon, such as this black bear, which visited a neighbor of mine, a friend of mine, here in Courtney, British Columbia, <laughs> just this past winter, and left some, some pretty nice tracks, and a pretty nice trackway in the snow. Not, not really a, a problem determining, especially when he provided scale, that this was in fact a bear. And with regard to the Sasquatch, occasionally Sasquatches have left their tracks in this, this moist, shallow snow and left a pretty good impression. There, 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 there's another uh, <clears throat> series of tracks I'd like to mention because uh, Randy Breeson, an investigator on the, in the kind of southern coast range mountains of BC has recorded juvenile tracks and even in this photograph he's recorded the shape of the track and to his credit <laughs> uh, put his boot print there so that we could get the the size of the track based on our knowledge of the size of his boot and he also subsequently filmed uh, a Sasquatch trackway and in that in that bit of video footage there's a wonderful clip of a of, of a juvenile Sasquatch track in moist snow showing toe definition so here we have both good Sasquatch individual tracks and, and a bit about uh, the Sasquatch trackway. But it's the Sasquatch trackway that I really would like to address today. So, let's return to the bear. In this case, a grizzly bear, which demonstrates as it walks down a road in shallow snow, the straddle or trail width, so characteristic of most mammals, as, as they walk. And I include humans in this. We humans, as we walk, exhibit some straddle or trail width. We also exhibit a, not a great stride length. We exhibit scuffing as we uh, drag our feet into our footstep and out again. But I'll, I'll deal with that later on. Now, 
Okay, let, here we go to uh, mammal field guides. Uh, this is this is one I I prefer to use. This is uh, <coughs> Burton Grossenheider, the, the mammal field guide in the Peterson series. And here's here's their great page uh, showing bears and including the bear bear tracks and the bear trackway, at least as far as uh, one stride goes. Now talking about <coughs> Let me just return. They, they show a little bit of straddle here. There was one mammal, the red fox. Well, maybe all the foxes. But I know from my boyhood, I always knew when I was following a fox trail because the, the fox really placed its feet in line with each other and left a very, very narrow trail. And this seems to be what the Sasquatch does. It's evident, even in this, this trackway illustrated here. It was evident in an Ohio Sasquatch trackway photographed by my collaborator and colleague Don Keating many years ago in his Ohio research. I have uh, recently been working on a field guide page to uh, make an addition and an alternative to the bear page in field guides such as the Peterson Field Guide by Burton Grossenheider to show that, you know, we can do this for the Sasquatch. Now, Sasquatch. Now, I'm not going to go into this now, the, the anatomical feature, but I want to call your attention to what I presented on the, on the on, and it, it really took a vertical uh, representation to show the Sasquatch trackway, because the Sasquatch trackway shows, let me, let me break this down, long stride, is a really important feature and this minimal straddle or trail width in fact there's almost none and that comes up again and again when people follow Sasquatch trails we, we saw it here in Ohio we see it here with only three tracks but nevertheless a good representation from Arizona by uh, an investigator there We see it here in, 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 in Randy Breeson's photograph of uh, a Sasquatch trackway in, in the Coast Range Mountains of British Columbia. And because he, rec he didn't, he, because he recorded measurements, we can add those to his illustration. We see it here in another Sasquatch trackway he photographed. And we can see here how he was trying to demonstrate the, uh, the length of the stride, which certainly was beyond his normal stride length. And, even, and although he's not a tall man, even beyond the stride length of most humans. So let's just continue with this. Now, gee, just recently, uh, following a presentation I did here in British Columbia, uh, someone came forward saying, you know, I, I, I've seen this myself, and I photographed it, and I think, oh, gee, that's great. If he, and he did. He did a good job. Um, in eastern British Columbia, near a field, he saw a trackway, which he followed a little bit along here, and it, which diverged off. He put his foot, his boot, his which we have measurements of, it's around 12, 12 and a half inches into the tracks, just to confirm that yes, they were much larger than his boot. He, he demonstrated uh, stride length by doing this. I have his height somewhere. <laughs> Same sort of thing, way beyond the normal human stride. And just to demonstrate further, he actually laid down showing the height. Now, oh gee, as I was preparing this this kind of research video, 
a colleague of mine, a collaborator who I've been working with for many, many years, Paul Graves, in, in Wenatchee, Washington, Central Washington, was contacted by some people who had discovered an amazing Sasquatch trackway near a work site. And they and he together worked at documenting that and are continuing to do so. And here we have, you know, one of the, his colleagues <clears throat> showing a bit of the scale for this trackway. A little more representation here. Here he is trying to kind of demonstrate uh, the stride length. Here he is measuring it. Now, Paul did provide me with some measurements. The average, well, the range was from four feet to six foot two, which is pretty substantial. And anyway, so, so here we have, let's go back to, to, to what I've been trying to do in this proposed field guide illustration that, you know, we need to be aware that we know something about the Sasquatch Trail or Trackway. We, we, we know, we do know, excuse me, we do know about the, what's the word? Long stride length. We do know about the minimum straddle. And we do need to include this. Um, I, I want to, I want, I want to mention one thing here. Um, Paul Graves, it, it, in, in this report, where, where these people were obviously so impressed by stride length, beyond this, this range, four foot to six foot two, they recorded a couple of, well, at least one stride, 10 foot in length, and one stride, 13 foot. Now, Without going into great detail in historical accounts, that stride length of 13 foot, which seems pretty incredible to us, was similarly <laughs> perceived as exceptional back in 1851 in an Arkansas report, which, which I, I, I documented here because, you know, we do have these historical accounts of Sasquatch observations. And so here we are, the, the report goes on. It's about an animal bearing the unmistakable light likeness of humanity, of gigantic stature, the body covered with hair. It goes on that way. It ran away with great speed, leaping from 12 to 14 feet at a time. His footprints measured 13 inches. Well, Paul also suggested 13 feet, This he called it a leap. It was beyond the normal stride, which was in itself quite exceptional. Ah, so, excuse me, so all I want to say <laughs> is that we really need to go beyond uh, the upright bear, we really need to move beyond costumed humans, we ne really need to consider a field guide entry such as this to help people understand things they have been encountering and continue to encounter. I think I should stop right there. Thank you very much.